Let's talk about the reciprocal trigonometric functions. In order to graph them, it helps us to review sine, cosine, and tangent. So take a moment and graph each of those from negative two pi to two pi. I'm going to label the vertical axis by halves. So every two boxes will be one. Okay, check your graphs. And now let's talk about those reciprocal trigonometric functions. We first see cosecant. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So when I see CSC theta, I want to write one divided by sine theta. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So when we see SEC theta, it's one divided by cosine theta. And then the one that makes the most sense, cotangent, is the reciprocal of tangent. Just a quick tip, let's think about this. Cosecant starts with a C, but it is the reciprocal of sine S. Secant starts with an S, but it's the reciprocal of cosine C. Let's practice our six trigonometric functions now using just a basic right triangle. It has legs of three and four, so I can use Pythagorean theorem to get the hypotenuse, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or some of you might remember, it is one of our basic triangles, a three, four, five. Quick review, remember Sokotoa? Sine is the ratio of the side opposite to hypotenuse, cosine is the ratio of the side adjacent to hypotenuse, and tangent is the side opposite divided by the side adjacent. Now they've marked theta for us, so based on where theta is, we now need to find the value of sine of theta. So sine of theta, we look for the side opposite and compare it to the hypotenuse. So in this case, four fifths. For cosine, I need the side adjacent, which is our three, and then hypotenuse, which is five. And last tangent, opposite over adjacent, so four divided by three. As I look at cosecant, let's pretend like I haven't already written down sine, cosine, tangent. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So really I'm thinking hypotenuse over opposite. So in that case, five divided by four. The other way is just think of sine and take the reciprocal of four fifths, five fourths. So likewise with secant, we'd have hypotenuse over adjacent, five thirds, and cotangent, three divided by four. Now let's take a look at the six trigonometric functions on the unit circle. Now sine of theta, we already know that's the y coordinate, but can we remember why it's y? Based on this being theta, the side opposite is y and the radius is one, because remember, that's the point of the unit circle, radius one. That same idea, cosine is x, x divided by one. And tangent is our opposite over adjacent, so y divided by x. To get our reciprocal functions, then of course, we just need to take the reciprocal. Cosecant will be one divided by y, secant one divided by x, and cotangent x divided by y. For the most part, that x divided by y is the one we'll work with a little bit more. Okay, grab your calculator. Let's practice typing these into our calculator. So for example, when it says cotangent of 13 degrees, what would I need to type in? There is no cotangent button. I need to go ahead and say one divided by tangent of 13 degrees and evaluate there. Round to the nearest thousandth. Also, keep in mind that we have degree setting and radian setting. If I'm not seeing that mark for degree, you need to go to mode, change to radian, and evaluate. Take a moment to check your calculator work. If your values aren't the same, double check that you're in the right mode on your calculator. Look at that last question. How can I find cotangent without using the tangent key on my calculator? Cosine over sine. Now time to graph these reciprocal functions. First, secant. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So first, let's sketch cosine with a dashed line. Hmm, where the cosine graph is zero, I would have one divided by zero. So that's a vertical asymptote. So anywhere my cosine graph is zero, I can draw a vertical asymptote for secant. So what exactly is happening between these asymptotes? If secant is one over cosine, well, cosine at zero is one. So one over one would still be one. Remember, I'm counting the vertical axis by halves. So let's think of another value, pi over three. Cosine at pi over three is one half. The reciprocal of one half is two. So at pi over three, I'd be up at two. 
Likewise, at negative pi thirds, cosine is still one half, reciprocal of one half, two. <clears throat> so we see this behavior where at cosine's maxes, secant creates a concave up curve. Likewise, the minimum values, negative pi for instance, cosine of negative pi is negative one, secant then would be one over negative one, so negative one, so they share that value, and then since secant is the reciprocal function, it creates that downward facing curve at those minimum values. Now it's time to graph cosecant. Now cosecant is one over sine theta, so it's similar to secant, but now we'll start with a dashed graph of sine. Follow the steps and see if you can sketch cosecant. Check out the graph of cosecant. What do you notice about the asymptotes of secant compared to cosecant? Well, secant's asymptotes are those odd multiples of pi over two again, and cosecant's asymptotes are multiples of pi, zero, pi, two pi. Now that we know where the asymptotes are, we actually know the domain. All reals except multiples of pi for cosecant, and all reals except for odd multiples of pi over two for secant. So what about the range then? Well, if I walk up the y-axis, I can see the graph at negative infinity all the way up to negative one. Then there's a gap where I don't see the graph until I hit one, and then I see it going up to infinity. So in interval notation, the range for both secant and cosecant is negative infinity to negative one inclusive, one inclusive to infinity. Now we're asked to graph y equals two secant theta. We see the graph of secant right above, so we could very easily just stretch those y values by a factor of two, right? So one times two, two, two times two, four, and so on. But what happens if we're asked to graph this and we don't have the graph of secant right in front of us? What's one possible way we could do it? Well, let's go ahead and graph cosine, but graph it with that vertical stretch. So I'm gonna graph cosine theta with a vertical stretch by a factor of two. So the vertical stretch does not affect where cosine is zero. So the vertical asymptotes for secant will be at the same place. And then next, because I already sketched cosine with that vertical stretch, when I go to sketch secant, they still share that same high point and secant will just open up with that curve. Now keeping in mind that it is a bit skinnier to start with because this position where it would have equaled two, it's now going to be four. So now I can go ahead and finish the secant graph because I know how it behaves. Taking a look at this, domain hasn't changed because the location of the vertical asymptotes have not changed. So it's still all reals except for odd multiples of pi halves. But the range has changed based on that vertical stretch by a factor of two. Now the range will be negative infinity to negative two inclusive and positive two inclusive to infinity. Last, let's look at the graph of cotangent. Remember, y equals cotangent theta would be the same as cosine theta divided by sine. Well, to determine where my vertical asymptotes are, I need to know where does the denominator equal zero? Well, the denominator is the sine function, so I really am asking myself, where does sine theta equal zero? Thinking of the unit circle, sine is zero at zero degrees, and then pi degrees, and then two pi, three pi, and so on. So multiples of pi. So anywhere sine equals zero, cotangent will be undefined, and therefore we'll see a vertical asymptote. Let's sketch the asymptotes. Remember, zero pi, two pi in the negative direction, negative pi, negative two pi. Next, let's look at the center between two vertical asymptotes. So let's consider pi halves. Cosine of pi halves divided by sine of pi halves. So we know that zero divided by one or just zero. So between the two vertical asymptotes, the center is going to be zero much like tangent. I'll go ahead and plot all of those zeros. Now what's the behavior going to be from there? We're thinking of tangent, right? But 
Cotangent is the reciprocal of that. Well, let's just check value. What happens if we go ahead and find cotangent of pi force or cosine of pi force divided by sine of pi force? So cotangent of pi force is going to be one. That makes me think cotangent of three pi force will be negative one. And sure enough, if we take a look at the graph, in second quadrant at three pi force, cotangent will be negative one. So once we have the asymptotes for cotangent, it's not too hard to think through the graph or the curve for cotangent. Let's take a look at cotangent and tangent. We see that the asymptotes are located in different places because remember, cotangent is cosine divided by sine, so the zeros of sine cause the vertical asymptotes, whereas tangent is sine divided by cosine, therefore the zeros of cosine cause the vertical asymptotes. And then the overall shape changes just that little bit, right? Cotangent starts up concave up and changes to concave down. Tangent starts down, concave down, and changes to concave up. And that's the end, my friend. Oh, okay. a reciprocal function.